Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the From Dusk Till Dawn series with From Dusk Till Dawn 3, The Hangman's Daughter. Now, this was released straight to video in 2000, and this is the third film in the From Dusk Till Dawn series, and it acts as a prequel to the original film. Now, I'm honestly a pretty big fan of the first movie. It's actually one of my top five favorite films of all time, but I also think it's a film that really did not need sequels, and and the second one, From Dusk Till Dawn 2, Texas Blood Money, I think is an extremely mediocre film. I don't think it's a terrible film, but it's not exactly a good film either. And I would honestly say the same thing about this movie, but I would say this one is even more forgettable than the second one, and... I really don't know if I'm ever really gonna watch this movie again. Like, yes, I have it on DVD, but... I don't know if I'm really going to watch this again. Even the second one, as mediocre as it was, I could see myself maybe watching it again, like, as a time waster. I really, like, this movie, it's not, once again, it's not, like, a terrible movie, but I just find it to be so forgettable. Even though there are some interesting things about this film, overall, I don't really care for this. Now, as I pointed out already, this is actually a prequel to the first movie, and it's actually a western. It's set in early 20th century Mexico, and what's interesting about the film is the main character was actually a real person. The main character of this movie is author Ambrose Bierce, who was actually a real author from around this time, who actually did disappear in Mexico. So, I thought that was interesting, how they took this real-life historical figure and made him the main character of this movie. But the plot of The Hangman's Daughter is it follows Ambrose Spears down in Mexico, trying to join the Mexican Revolution, and he ends up with this religious couple who are in Mexico trying to preach the word of God. And in the beginning of the film, they witness the attempted hanging of an outlaw, but this outlaw manages to escape with the hangman's daughter when it's revealed that the hangman was abusing his daughter. So the hangman and his men start going after this outlaw, and eventually Bierce, this married couple, this outlaw, the hangman's daughter, and eventually the hangman and his men end up at this brothel that it turns out is actually run by vampires. And this brothel would, of course, become the titty twister during the events of the first movie. And that's the basic plotline of this movie, but I will say there is an interesting twist involving the hangman's daughter. I'm just gonna say it right now. The hangman's daughter, whose name is Esmeralda, you find out at the end of the film that she's basically Simon Hellick's character from the original From Dusk Till Dawn, which I thought was interesting, but at the same time, we didn't really get to know Simon Hellick's character in the first movie that well for it to warrant an origin story for her. And Danny Trejo reprises his role as Razor Charlie from the first two movies. Obviously, this has taken place years and years before the events of the first two movies. And Ambrose Bierce is played by Michael Parks in this movie. Michael Parks had a small role in the first movie where he played the character of Earl McGraw. And Tamora Mortensen plays the hangman, and I could go through the other actors in this movie, but... Really, I don't give a shit. Because the acting in this film really isn't as good as it was in the original film, and I actually did like the acting in the second film, as over-the-top as it was, but here the acting is really kind of bland. And Michael Parks is easily the best part of this movie. Him and maybe Danny Trejo, but Danny Trejo's the best part of anything. I mean, he's the best part of this photo of me right here. And there are moments in the film where you could tell the director is trying to be kind of artsy. Like, there are certain points where Beers is having these dreams of him being killed. And at a certain point when the vampires start attacking all the people in the brothel, like, he all of a sudden sees himself on a balcony, which I thought was kind of interesting. There's also a certain point where the wife and the married couple is being seduced by this vampire played by Orlando Jones. And... 
The scene is shot in black and white, and once again, you could tell it was the director trying to be sort of artsy, which I actually thought was kind of interesting. Unfortunately, those were some of the only few interesting things about this movie. And there are some interesting effect sequences in the film, like, at a certain point, the hangman blows off a vampire's head, and the snake replaces its head, which was actually a pretty good effect. And there's really not much else to say about this movie. Once again, I didn't hate it, and there were some things I thought were interesting, but overall, the movie just didn't really work for me, and I just didn't really care for it. So, sorry if this really wasn't much of a review, but in my opinion, this really wasn't much of a movie, and part of the reason why this wasn't much of a review is because I really don't know what to say about this. Like, I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it either. So, that was my review on From Dusk Till Dawn 3, The Hangman's Daughter, and this concludes my reviews on the From Dusk Till Dawn series. Now, From Dusk Till Dawn was the last franchise I had picked out to review for Horror Month. However, this won't be the end of Horror Month. I decided to end 2018's Horror Month off with reviewing newer films in franchises that I reviewed in the past. Now, for Horror Month of 2013, I reviewed all the Child's Play movies, but there's been a recent installment of that series since then, so my next movie review will be on the most recent Child's Play movie, Cult of Chucky.